Right, we ready for the word? Amen. amen. The word of God, amen, is going to keep us. Amen. Providing that we adhere to it. Praise the Lord. So at this time, without further ado, amen, we're going to make ready to receive this word. And I'm going to ask if you would stand at this time as it is customary to do. Amen. And we're going to turn our attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 1 through 11. Amen. I'm reading these number of verses so we can make sure things are in context as we begin to unpack the scriptures. Again, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. And it reads, Now I, Paul, myself beseech you, by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who am present and based among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, uh, wherewith I think to be bold against some. We think of us if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and then bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord has given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by love. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech contemptible. Let such an one think this, that such as we are in word by letters. When we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for your people. We thank you, Lord God, for the ills that we hear. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, open up our hearts, our minds, and our understanding that we may hear your word and receive it with gladness and do all that you commanded of us so that we may glorify you in everything that we both say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Amen. I realize that that passage was somewhat lengthy but necessary. Yes, sir. Amen. I want to talk for a few moments about the effective takeovers of our spiritual weapons. Amen. Our spiritual weapons are designed to take over certain things in our lives. Isn't that right? Yes, Amen. So we find in these verses uh, that Paul takes the time to vindicate or defend uh, his apostleship. <laughs> yes, he does this because others were saying uh, that he talks big in his letters yeah. when he is away from the people. Uh, amen. But Amen. He speaks humbly to them when he's in their midst. Amen. In other words, Paul, you are big and bad when you are writing your letters to us. But it's a different story when you are in our company. Amen. You know how people were bad now. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. They're bad now. You win. They're not in your company. Can I get a witness? Amen. And, 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 and so Paul argues that we who are Christians, mm -hmm. we who are Christians uh, do not war in the flesh. <laughs> yeah. Some may think, yeah. uh, perhaps you know some that do, but I submit to you perhaps that they are not Christians. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory to God. He says in verse 3, For though we walk or live in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Mm -hmm. uh, he declares in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, Sister Ruth, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh, but against principalities, those things that are first against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world is what we wrestle against, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So if you ever wondering what's wrong with somebody, come on, Bishop. Jesus. <laughs> you have to understand that they have been influenced by an evil force. Ah, to come against you and rob you of your joy. Yes. Can I get a witness? Amen. Therefore, we don't fight with the flesh. We don't rebuke the flesh. We rebuke that spirit. Hey. Hey. <laughs> that demonic influence. Oh, ah, that is coming yes, to trouble us. I wish I could get a witness in here. Amen. Ah, many things we wrestle with are caused by the devil and his influence. Yes. Yes. It may yes. seem, it may seem like it's your spouse. Come on. It may seem like it's your relative, your friend, or your right. employer. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Right. But it's actually the oh, money God. forces yes. working together to unnerve you. Jesus. Working together to unsettle you. Yes, sir. Working together to break and to crack. You. Can I get a witness? Ah, yeah. uh, causing you to break up relationships oh. and to lose your victory. My God, I feel God is healed. Uh, anyone know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. And so Paul concludes in verse 11 by saying, uh, let such people realize uh, that what we say by letters when we are absent, uh, we put also in deeds when we are present. Uh, in other words, we're not going to say one thing and do another. another. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so Paul alludes to the fact that talk is cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and that we must put into action. Oh, that's worth saying again. Oh, uh, yeah, talk is cheap. Amen. But we must put into action uh, those things that we both say and talk about. Isn't that right? Oh, uh, yeah. So Paul is able to say this. Uh, amen. Because he realizes that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Mm -hmm. What Paul means by this is that our weapons are not fleshly. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Are given to cruel, bodily pleasures. Amen. But that they are mighty through God to, for specific purpose. I wish I could get a witness in here. Come on. And so today, my friend, if you would allow me, I want to make you aware of four effective takeovers. Uh, of our spiritual weapons uh, that give us control over demonic influence. Mm -hmm. I feel God in here. Oh, Look, yes, yes, yes. for the weapons of our warfare, as Paul lays out, they are not carnal, mm -hmm. but they are mighty through God for specific purposes. Uh, and the first is for the takeover and the destruction of strongholds. Uh, what do you mean by stronghold preaching? Well, in the Greek, uh, it means the arguments and reasoning uh, by which a disputing or someone who is always disputing uh, uh, yes, endeavors yes. or work to fortify his or her position or opinion uh, and to defend it against opponents. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, well, in layman terms, uh, that person was always argumentative. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, always 
argument here. Amen. No one point is right, but they. Mm -hmm. They don't even have time to hear what you have to say because they're too busy disputing and trying to defend uh, their own position. Amen. But our weapons uh, tear out these strongholds. Ah, uh, yes. In other words, we destroy reasoning uh, of pagan philosophers as well as Jewish uh, rabbis and their dogmas of dogmatic teaching uh, and that attempt to notify or invalidate uh, the word of God and the facts of the gospel. Always somebody out there, uh, amen, trying to make God's word other than what it is. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Ah, uh, but Paul teaches us uh, uh, that we destroy any bad teaching and any bad advice. Ah, uh, yeah, my friend, anything that tries to cancel out the word of God. Amen. I don't care who is preaching it. I don't care who is teaching it. Amen. These fortifications uh, we pull down and we demolish. Uh, oh yeah, we put to flight, we put to flight uh, the demon powers and alien armies uh, that come to trouble us. Uh, anybody ever been troubled before? Uh, hey man, these alien armies that come to break us, that come to make us less than who <coughs> or what we are. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, but what we do instead, my friend, uh, is that we raise the banner of the cross. Uh, high on the field of battle. <laughs> my God, my God. <laughs> and so the second purpose of our <laughs> weapons <laughs> is for the takeover and the casting down of imagination. Well, what do you mean by that preacher? <laughs> Amen. We demolish. <laughs> we demolish all theories. Because a lot of folks got a lot of theories out there. We demolish all reasoning because a lot of folks got reasons for everything. Isn't that right? As well as any high systems of ethics. ethics. Amen. Glory to God. Any high system of religion. Any high system of mythology. Praise the Lord, as we was talking about this morning in Bible school, I'm talking about myth, legend, false lures, and uh, tradition, amen, because many people are steeped in uh, tradition, isn't that right? Amen. Oh my God, which is not a good thing, man. Uh, any system of metaphysics, uh, sublime doctrine, amen, people trying to slip a word in here, amen, in a subtle <laughs> Way before you know it, you will be leaving it. Uh, amen. Any philosophy, attitude, viewpoints, uh, and ideas that is set up to defy, uh, to challenge, and to resist the knowledge of God. Uh, perhaps you were ranting into some folks like that. Oh yeah. Amen. Before. But I stopped by to tell you, my friend, uh, that all the small G God. Uh, uh, that have been bragged about uh, all the sacrificial and meritorious systems uh, they failed before the gospel uh, they couldn't stand up to the word of God uh, the high sounding phrases of Plato the high sounding phrases of Aristotle amen and even Judaism uh, failed before the preaching of Jesus Christ Christ and him crucified and the power of his resurrection. <laughs> oh, come on, give the Lord some praise. <laughs> Amen. When Paul, came, when Paul came before the people, uh, Amen. The only thing he wanted to know, the only thing he wanted to talk about uh, was Jesus Christ uh, and him oh crucified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That's what he wants to know. Uh, even when he visited Anthony, amen. And so all of those markers, all of those grave markers, all of those, amen, structures that were created to worship all different kinds of God, amen. He managed to see one that said the unknown God. Uh, and he says to them, the Athen philosophers, uh, oh, my God, my God. He said, this is the God. Uh, that I want to talk about. Uh, this is the God that I want to preach about. Uh, the one that you don't know, uh, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, and him who's the power. My 
God, my God. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, we have power to cast down these imaginations. Amen. Number three and only have four. So we just about done. Amen. Glory to God. The weapons of our warfare. Uh, amen. They are designed for the takeover and the bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. My God. Now that's a hard one to swallow there because it said every thought uh, unto the obedience of Christ. Uh, so we can't go around saying uh, that my thoughts got the best of me. Uh, uh, before I knew it, amen, it just happened. Uh, glory to God. That's not the case. Uh, but we can bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Uh, in other words, we take every thought prisoner, amen, and lead it into captivity to obey God. Ain't none of this I couldn't help myself. Oh, no. Ain't no more than for the Christians. I, I just couldn't help myself. Oh, you did it because you wanted to do it. You did it because you made up your mind to do it. Isn't that right? You made it, you did it because you allowed your thoughts to be uncaptive, to be liberated and to run amok in your life. Oh, I wish I could get a witness in here. Oh, yes, I'm talking about lasciviousness. Oh, matter of uncleanness. Amen. Pain and evil thoughts of all kinds. They're broke down and they're made obedient. To, to the laws of Christ. <laughs> oh my God, we need to remember this. Praise the Lord, because we can bring these thoughts, uh, these desires, and these ideals, and these reasons, and these excuses. Uh, we can bring them into captivity so that we may obey That's right. the word of God. That's right. uh, I submit to you, we don't obey because we don't want to obey. Amen. In fact, Jesus teaches that if we don't obey him, uh, then the devil must be our father. Yes. Well, that's good. I got to put my hands up on them. I give up. <laughs> Jesus said that. <laughs> so we're either the father of the children of God or we're the children of the devil. Isn't that right? Amen. And when we bring these thoughts into obedience of Christ, uh, that includes any thinking uh, which is contrary to virtue. Uh, any thinking that is contrary to excellence. Uh, isn't that right? Uh, any thinking that is contrary to purity uh, and righteousness. Uh, any thinking, any thinking, and any action, any actions uh, that is contrary to biblical principles uh, and sound doctrine. My God, my God. I'm talking about the takeover. Uh, amen. Of every thought of laziness. Uh, we got to bring it into captivity. Uh, amen. Every thought of absence, absences. Uh, we got to bring it into captivity. Uh, every thought of softness. Uh, we got to bring it into uh, captivity. Isn't that right? Uh, amen. Every thought of excuses. Uh, we got to bring it into Captivity, my God, my God. Uh, every thought of stinginess, uh, we got to bring it uh, into captivity. <laughs> Woo, my God, help me to obey your word, my God. Uh, help me not to be absent. Uh, help me to be on time. Uh, help me not to be slothful. Uh, help me not to be stingy. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, every sin. Uh, we need to bring it into captivity. My God, my God. All of these things and more, my friend, uh, we bring into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Uh, why? Because our weapons uh, are the mighty to God. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, and when we learn this, uh, when we realize this, uh, when we internalize this, uh, we'll realize the power that we have up in Christ Jesus. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, oh, don't tell me you can't help yourself. Uh, if you've got the power of God, you can help yourself. Uh, my God, my God. Uh, don't tell me you don't know what you're doing. Uh, if you've got the power of God, uh, my God, my God, you can bring that way 
with mine into change. Oh yeah, those unbridled, those unharnessed desires that you have, you can bring them uh, into check. Why? Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not flushed. Oh, but they're mighty through God. My God, in the fourth purpose, the first the fourth purpose and takeover of our weapon is for having any readiness. See, we don't generally make it to this verse when we're quoting the rest. But we ought to have any readiness to take over and avenge all disobedience. But we can only do it once our obedience has been fulfilled. Isn't that right? You can't tell your sister to stop you the profanity when you ain't got yours in check. All right. All right. Uh -huh. That's what Paul talking about. Yeah, yeah, my God, my God. Uh -huh. you, you can't tell somebody else to stop running around when you ain't put on brakes yourself. Can I get a little My God, my God. But what he is saying, what he is saying, when you ain't got the mold out your eye, you can help pull the beat. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, God. See, it's imperative, it's imperative. Oh, my God, my God, and our obedience is first for freedom. And you know when your obedience had been fulfilled, huh, and you're trying to restore your brother, huh, it really don't matter to you how ugly they get. Yeah. Huh, amen. Because your obedience huh, had been uh, fulfilled. Isn't that right? Huh? Mm -hmm. I can't tell you to be on time when I'm late all the time. Huh? That's great. Can I do with you? Woo, God. In other words, my friend, huh, we stand at all time yeah. ready, so to speak, yeah. huh, amen, to court martial huh, any opposing the gospel of Christ. Anybody who opposing yeah. the gospel of Christ, we stand ready to court martial them. Yeah. Huh. Can I get a witness? Huh? But only after our obedience huh, has been fulfilled, isn't that right? Huh? right? Anybody, amen, opposing the gospel of Christ, huh, acting contrary to the gospel of Christ. After we first separate ourselves from sin. Can I get a witness? After we separate ourselves from them. Isn't that right? You know the old saying, where the fellow flock together. Praise the Lord. Amen. We become accessories by association. Can I get a witness? Amen. First Peter chapter 3. Amen. Glory to God. Verses 15 through 17 declares this. Amen. And Peter said, but sanctify uh, uh, set apart the Lord God where? Uh, in your hearts. Uh, and once you do that, uh, be ready always to do what? Uh, give an answer to some men. Uh, uh, give an answer to every man that asks you uh, a reason of the hope that is in you. Uh, and when you do it, he wants you to do it with meekness. Ah, uh, yes, and fear. Uh, you don't want you to get beside yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when folk begin to question us, uh, amen, you know, we get a little bit of fear and trepidation. Uh, particularly, we're not sure of our answer or how to respond. Uh, my God, and so we developed in what we call the inferiority complex. Oh, uh, y'all know what that is. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, you get an exaggerated sense uh, of your own limitations. Huh? And then that brings them out aggressive behavior. Right. Uh -huh. What you talking about? Uh -huh. What you mean? I don't know my goal. Yeah. Uh, well, I simply ask you a personal reason for your hope. Uh, amen. Glory to God. And then they throw the word on you themselves. Uh, you ought to be giving me an answer in meekness. Uh -huh. right. <laughs> Woo, tell me the devil don't know the word. Okay. My God, my God. Verse 16 said, and having a good conscience. A good conscience huh? that whereas they speak evil of you, huh? as of evildoers, huh? they may be ashamed and false accuse huh? your good conversation, huh? your good conduct, huh? your good deportment, huh? your good character, huh? your good integrity, yeah. huh? your good position and relationship are huh? uh, in Christ. Huh? He said in verse 17, for it is better. 
<laughs> it is better the will of God be so uh, that you suffer for well doing of need be uh, than for evil doing. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, and so as I close here, and I don't have but one, uh, the whole picture here is that of a strong fortified city. Uh, amen. Where the enemy makes his last stand. Uh, entrenching himself about the walls, uh, raising towers and preparing engines of offense and defense uh, upon the walls to ensure their victory. Uh, uh, but that doesn't make any difference uh, because the fortification, my friends, uh, the walls and the towers, and the castles are taken down by the gospel and the whole opposition is the stronger and taken captive. That's why he said to the pulling down of stronghold. My God, somebody ought to give God some praise in here. Give God praise for the message of our walk mighty to God. We ought to give God some praise yeah. uh, for deliverance uh, from the things that have happened. We ought to give some praise for the power to stand back there for the liberty where well, Christ has made us free uh, and so that we will not be taken again uh, with the yoke of bondage. Uh, my God, my God, uh, Oh, Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, in your precious and holy name, Lord God, we give you praise. We give you praise for your word, your powerful word, your unadulterated, your uncensored, your uncut word. Oh, God, they come to bring us deliverance, They help us put down these strongholds, to help us cast down these imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against you. My God, my God, and not only that, they give us the power, Lord, to God, to have a readiness, a readiness to amend all disobedience. Once our obedience, has been fulfilled. Touch the hearts of the people, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, those who have walked away from your word, God, those who are unsure, Lord, those who are not saved, those who need you, Lord God, convict their hearts, oh Lord God. Call to them, Lord. Draw them in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, when your call comes, that they will surrender yes. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, that they will come unto you, O oh Father. Yes. Lord God, that they may be blessed of you, that they may be saved in the name of Jesus. I pray that you forgive them of their sins. Lord God, that you wash them and cleanse them and fill them with your Holy Spirit. And having done so, oh Lord God, that you will use them in a mighty way, Lord God. We pray for those who are sick. In the name of Jesus, those who are in trouble, Lord God, let them cry out to you, Lord God, that they may receive your healing virtue. In the name of Jesus, that they may receive your outstretched hand of deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for your people everywhere. And we continue to pray for them and the nation, for kings everywhere, Lord God, even this ministry. In Jesus' name, Jesus. we pray, amen and amen. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise forever. Give the Lord a praise forever. Amen. And we pray that something that has been said and done here to encourage your heart. I submit you to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Well, with Christ that made you free, be not a weak and tangled with the yoke of God. We love you. We'll appreciate you. Amen. If you'd like to be a blessing to this ministry, man, just keep watching the information that will be on the screen. Not only that, but we encourage you to stop by and see us if you're in the San Diego, in Oklahoma, Amen. District. Praise the Lord. We're here. Doors are open. And we thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Amen.